On this week's episode, we talk about the NFL draft, the upcoming Maple Leafs playoff series, plus our NHL award picks, and the first round of the NBA playoffs is complete. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 16, season two of Points and Penalties. For all our listeners, we'd like to remind you to please subscribe wherever you get your podcast. For our viewers on YouTube, please be sure to subscribe to our channel by clicking the little PMP button in the bottom right corner of this video. Right about here. And no matter, yeah, right about here. No matter how you check us out, um, make sure you give us a follow, like, and subscribe, all that good stuff on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, at Points Penalties. Once again... Right. We're a Canadian podcast, eh? Yeah, eh? Take off, you hoser. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody should know me by now. My name is Josh. With me are my three co-hosts, as always. Start up with Kevin, Jesse, and Peter. How are you guys feeling tonight? A little toasty. Playoffs tomorrow, baby. Let's go. All right, Kev. You look like you're uh, ready for the NFL draft, or maybe you just finished the draft, but why don't you tell us about your beer first off? It's a repeat that I've had. I've had this one before. The Booty Minus Ranger. Minus one. Yep. It's an IPA. <laughs> Strong beer. I like it because of the, you know, skulls that I like. It is a uh, 7%. And I'm sure because I've had it before. It's going to be a good one. I think more than just you has had that. I'm pretty sure I've had that one. Yeah, I've had that too. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't. It's a good one. I like it. So since you haven't had it, um, Pedro, what are you drinking today? Okay, today I am uh, found a new one. It's called the Furminator Double IPA. I've had that too. Have you? Yep. Damn it. <laughs> uh, it's from the Furnace Room Brewery in uh, Georgetown, Ontario. It's an eight percent strong beer. Ooh. And. Uh, Let's give it a try. Bring in the heat today, Jesse. Bring in the heat. We got a 7% and 8%. Here we go. Yeah, that'll do the trick. Jesse, what are you drinking? Well, it's not as potent as your guys, so, oh, so far. So, bitch. <laughs> so I'm drinking Lost Paradise by Blood Brothers. It's a sour ale. I was very con concer concerned at having this because I'm not a huge fan of sour, but I was interested in also in it. So I'll give it a whirl right now. It's only a 6%. But Bitch. Yeah. But yeah, it's sour. <laughs> <laughs> Looks delicious. <clears throat> that's uh, it's going to take some use to get into getting used to yosh what are you having oh boys uh i went with riverhead brewing company out of kingston jesse i'm sure you probably know these guys you frequent uh, kingston uh, quite a bit uh it is their outer limits double ipa it is of course a strong beer and uh once again you guys are all bitches damn it. <laughs> <laughs> i have an 8.51 percent bad boy you can see some fucking people camping and getting fucking beamed up to the ufo and you shit. say 8.51 yeah that's what it says then 8.51 <laughs> very specific <laughs> wouldn't like, you be pissed really off if you had an 8.5 oh, really <laughs> all right let's try this bad boy <laughs> yep it's a double ipa tasty af Tasty AF. Well, guys, busy week. I just mentioned uh, that Kev looks like he was either a fan at the draft or, I mean, can even pass for like the GM or some shit, right? <laughs> so, anyway, we're going to get right into the NFL draft. Jazz, I'll start with you and uh, we'll move on to Kevin in a few minutes. Yeah. So, we're going to talk about the draft here and the number one overall pick, which none of us got correct. Ends up being Trayvon Walker from Georgia, the national champs. And they were drafted by the Jacksonville Jaguars. So 
help out that defensive line. They didn't get a lot of sacks last year, so this will be huge for them. They didn't go with my boy Aiden Hutchinson, who is returning to Michigan to play for the Detroit Lions. It's my pick for number one all, so I was closest. I think that worked. that's how it goes. <laughs> that doesn't matter. <laughs> Second place is the first loser. <laughs> And so we also got uh, the New York Giants took uh, the other guy we thought might have been another first overall was Kevin Thibodeau, who went fifth overall. So he dropped actually quite a bit compared to what we had initially thought. But another another guy that uh, or another guy that the Giants have gotten is Evan Neal, who was Josh and Peter's pick. Yeah, he's an he's an offensive line. (laughs) And it was also Chicago's pick that they traded to get Justin Fields from last year. Oh, wow. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. The Bears didn't get a first round pick this year, but they got Justin Fields. So we, he still has got a lot to prove. But right now, there's a lot of good guys to pick at this area. Yep. <laughs> but then they still wouldn't have a quarterback. And maybe we still don't, but. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, yeah, there wasn't much pickings in the quarterback this year anyway. This year, so maybe, yeah. may have been a good move, but mm-hmm. we'll see that he did not do too hot last year. But we'll move on to the guy that is dressed in Falcons gear. They took uh Atlanta took Drake London, who is a wide receiver, eighth overall, the first wide receiver of a record-breaking wide receiver class in the first round with six. And he's the first overall to go. And he's probably going to be replacing Calvin Ridley, who is going to be suspended for the season for betting on games last year. Kev, how are you feeling about this pick? Hey, man. It's going to help him, I believe. I mean, it's going to replace Ridley. Hopefully he can. I'm, I'm you know, somewhat excited to see. I might be on the bandwagon with, you know, one foot on, one foot off kind of thing with, like, uh, to make me laugh. But, you know, I'll give it one more year for these uh, Falcons. If not, then we all know where I'm going. <laughs> what are you going to do with all your hot Atlanta gear? I'm going to put this. Uh, Burn it. No, I'm going to put the crumpler uh, probably in, like, glass and frame it. And nice. Put it That's on the wall. Him. Yeah, I think that'll be a first for him. <laughs> <laughs> No, I think it's a great pick. I think I don't think he was the best wide receiver in the class. I, class, I thought uh, Jamison Williams was who went to Detroit a little a couple picks later, but he got hurt late in the season and didn't try out for the combine. But I think Drake London is a is still a really really good pick. And even though Calvin Ridley like yeah, had to take some time off for mental health and he's friggin' gambling on games right now. He is still a really, really good receiver. But you just got Marcus Mur- Mariota throwing to you now. So, oof. Mm. <laughs> we'll see I how mean, good he It's not much worse than Matty Ice, man, really. <laughs> That's a little Ooh. bit. Yeah, you watch. You, Matty wow. Ice will do fuck all, man. Wow. He, he was, he's, he's probably going, he maybe, yeah, he'll probably go to the Hall of Fame. I think. Yeah. But like as of late, like when you compare the last couple seasons, like obviously Mariota didn't play all year because he's was has been a backup. But I think I think Ryan has had pretty good seasons except for last year, more or less. But before that, he was having pretty good seasons. He, they just they didn't have defense, is what I found more or less. And remember, they were in the Super Bowl not that long ago. Yeah, fair enough. That Super Bowl, I forget. Wasn't it like 28 to 3 at some point, or was that am I thinking of something else? I mean, somebody was way up and somebody <laughs> blew a big lead. So <laughs> Kev, do you remember? I wish I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, you trying just, to forget that night. <laughs> if you just add a two to the front of your jersey, you'll have the score right there. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so I think he's going to be pretty good there. They just need a QB now, which they'll probably go and look in next year for. And we talked about Jordan Davis, who ended up going very, very early at pick 13 to the Eagles. After cutting Fletcher and re-signing him, he's going to match up with him, which should help him out a bunch. 
And Josh, I think you had the him going the earliest as possible at 17, and he the he, they even did he even did better than that, which was pretty pretty good. And we don't know what we're talking about half the time. I mean, this is definitely true. You speak facts. <laughs> you spin the truth. All right. So Kyle Hamilton, which was Kev's pick for the number one overall, and Peter lost a point off that because he thought a DB had never been picked first overall. I had to go back to like the 50s or something. Like yeah, it was yeah. a long time ago. <laughs> but it has you. happened. <laughs> <laughs> and it looks like the Ravens probably got another Ed Reed. This guy is going to be a stud for them. He can pretty much do anything. Big rangy guy can hit. So that's good because I'm kind of a Ravens fan. I like the team a lot, but that uh, they needed in that AFC North there because it's going to be a tough division. Now let's get on to the Titans. Yeah. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> <laughs> so they traded away A.J. Brown after he was upset and taking the Titans off Twitter and all this other stuff and wanted to be traded or wanted to be paid. Uh, he ended up getting paid, I believe. He did, yeah. Eagles. I don't remember the number. I think it's four years, 100 million. It's 25 per yeah, that's 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 a lot of money, and that might be why the Titans had traded him because they didn't want to pay that money out. Uh, but they selected his replacement with the pick they got from the Eagles, Traylon Burks from Arkansas, and he's kind of the same thing as Brown, except he's gonna be a lot cheaper. Now, this reminds me of a Family Guy episode. <laughs> The mystery box? The mystery box. <laughs> <laughs> Where Peter's like, the mystery box could be anything. It could even be, <laughs> be a boat. And in this episode, they are they are the, they could either get the boat or the mystery box. Well, so. I, I think you're exactly on the money on that, Jesse. <laughs> but uh, it made me laugh when I saw that. <laughs> they did get a third round pick. Guy from Ohio shit, but yeah, yeah. Uh, they need uh, O-line anyway, so that's good for them. Nicholas Piete, P P Petit, Petit Frere. Petit Frere. <laughs> free, free. Didn't, didn't, free didn't you take grade 10 French? <laughs> I do not remember it. <laughs> I, I thought you only had to take one, one, one of those courses. I think I only did the nine. <laughs> what the fuck does that name even mean? Like small friend? Small brother, maybe? <laughs> Something like that? Maybe, Maybe sure. friend. I don't know. We don't speak I'm, 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 I'm not challenged. <laughs> <laughs> Peter, how do you feel about this? Yeah, you said it, you felt like it was the same with the mystery box, but... Yeah, like I, I get that they probably weren't going to be able to pay him. So, so yeah, I, I guess I get the motivation. But it's, it's dumb. Like, you're, you're trading away... Uh, top guy. receiver in this league to draft a guy that's very similar and could be as good, maybe. But probably not. Because A.J. Brown's really good. And yeah, he'll be cheaper. Um, but there had already been a bunch of receivers off the board at this point. So that doesn't make me feel great about the pick. And uh, they really only got a third round pick as a, a bonus. To go along with uh, with taking the new and hopefully as good version of AJ Brown, so I would have liked to see a lot more value out of the trade. I get why they did it if they weren't going to pay him, but the value just wasn't there, so I'm not happy about it. But they're the same prototype player, so hopefully Burks can be just as good as Brown was. We'll see. But like you said, he's already proven and you're you're gambling here, right? And yeah, exactly. Your team is built pretty well right now where you yeah, can make pushes to playoffs and to be a contender for the Super Bowl. So um yeah. I, I think they went the wrong way with this. I think they should have uh, kept AJ Brown and uh, added as much as they could. And somehow, somehow you gotta pay the man, right? Somehow There's definitely pay. ways. The Rams yeah. always figure a way to pay. Them yeah, and then, give them and one, take it all to make it fucking signing bonuses. Like that doesn't go against the cap. So you know, shit like that. Like, well, there's got to be. Well, it does. It just pushes it down the road. Well, that's fine. 
but he, he also had just took on uh, Robert Woods uh, deal too. So that's, that's another thing too, that they, they got great value there. <laughs> yes, <laughs> <laughs> but he is also a receiver coming off an ACL tear. So, yeah, the only thing that makes it hopefully okay for me is that the Titans actually ended up getting one of the was thought to be top quarterbacks out of this draft class. Yeah, uh, yeah was. later in the in the third round, I think. Yeah, he was. So, well, go ahead. And I think he's a bit of a raw prospect from what I read, but he was like that top quarterback prospect. So hopefully that'll work out and it'll all be uh, forgotten that they got rid of Brown for. It won't be forgotten. We'll really, remind really only a third round pick <laughs> on top of uh, his replacement. But Do the Eagles play the Titans this year? Do you know? No idea. Because that'll be a fucking game for sure. A.G. Brown will go nuts on that game for sure. <laughs> Well, just just one thing, like AJ Brown has struggled to stay healthy too, so that might have been something in there too. But the way he plays is very physical, right? So like, yeah, you, you get he's kind of like he gets a ton of yak yards too, so that's huge. Like, he's still a good receiver, but he gets hurt. But he's a big guy; he can take it. He just misses a couple games here and there. But, but with, anyways, you're talking about the the quarterback. There was only one quarterback taken in the first two rounds. And it was Kenny Pickett in the first round. And he was drafted by the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, when you said the highest prospected uh, QB, I think Kenny Pickett is the most ready. And Malik Willis has the higher ceiling. Yeah. that's And like you said, he's raw. But it's still pretty good value to get in the third round. The only problem is you got Tannehill, and I don't know if you want him teaching him. <laughs> quarterback <laughs> just in the regular season yeah <laughs> maybe that's why they got rid of brown don't make the playoffs that way you don't have to learn from Tannehill how to play in the playoffs it's all about the future <laughs> grasping a straws here fellas I, I, I can see that <laughs> i'm pretty sure that i said that kenny pickett was going to go to pittsburgh uh, yeah, you did. I think you, I think you did. Um, I didn't really argue that one because that one makes kind of made perfect sense to me. He yeah, went to college yeah. there, and and we didn't see like who really needed a quarterback early is maybe Carolina Panthers. Mm-hmm. That was about it. So this will be an interesting QB uh, uh, battle here between Pickett, uh, Mitch fucking Trubisky. And Mason I guess Rudolph. Mason Rudolph, and it would have been Dwayne Haskins too. So, um, but that obviously we know how that ended up. So, um, yeah, that would have been a that's going to be a hell of a hell of a battle for that QB spot for sure. Yeah, I think uh, I think I can see Tomlin giving it to Pickett. To tell you the truth, you think? Yep, I can he, see it too. But I stand huge for the fans there. Yeah, I stand by my philosophy that that would be a bad idea and you should let your young rookie quarterbacks marinate a bit before you toss them on the grill. Well, we'll we'll see how Trey Lance does because what he looked like last year wasn't so good and he hasn't really played a whole lot. He played behind Garoppolo the whole time. So we'll see. Well, I guess Garoppolo is still on the team, so we'll see what happens if he's going to be sitting again. Yeah, and it's not like the guys that are playing in front of Pickett are that good. Right. What are you could talking e- about? He could easily <laughs> win that job. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. For sure. So so there's not much for him to sit back and marinate and watch anybody, right? Before you throw him on the grill, as you said. <laughs> I mean, you're going to watch Mitch and, and Mason Rudolph? Like, I mean, there's more to getting acclimated to the league than just watching the guy in front of you. Well, obviously, but there's getting reps in practice. There's getting your feel for the league. Blah 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 blah. I, I think you gotta you have to protect your quarterback, but you gotta get him time in there. And the faster you get in there, then you don't have to wait on him. You can figure out quickly or not if if he's gonna make it in this league or not. But whatever, different philosophies. It is what it is. Uh, but this is huge this year for the first two rounds. 
no quarterback, only one quarterback was taken. And yeah. that, that has been the third time in the last 30 years and happened in 1996 and uh, in 2000. Hmm. Just wild. Was 2000 Brady's draft year or was that 99? 99 yeah. it was Brady's. Brady's draft year, actual year was 99, but it was a 2000 season <laughs> coming up. <laughs> You guys sound like you've talked about this before. Uh, no, no, I wouldn't have been. <laughs> no, I think it was just straight up. Nineteen ninety challenge? Or no, just no challenge. Just, no, no, just, no, 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 we're no. just debating. I'm, I'm sure he was drafted in nineteen ninety nine. The nineteen ninety nine draft. So, mm, I feel like I lost the challenge this already. <laughs> <laughs> that was about the Super Bowl, though, where we crossed over. Um, right, but. The draft is in April, so it would have been in the 2000. It would have been the 2000 draft. Ooh. I, I think it's the 99 draft. All right, I'm going to challenge you. I'm going to say it's the 2000. <laughs> okay, all right. I'm pretty sure. This is a repeat, but I'm pretty sure. <laughs> At least we got one out of the way. <laughs> okay, hang on, because it'll be real quick to answer this. <laughs> it was in the 2000 NFL draft. Fuck. Boom. <laughs> Got it back after the massive mistake by me, anyways. <laughs> I must have been getting confused by the number one ninety nine, <laughs> an extra nine. Yeah, there. probably, probably. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he was the pick one ninety nine. Yeah, in the two thousand year draft. So see, this is just like the year two thousand draft, where the best quarterback, future Hall of Famer, future goat, was not drafted in the first round. In this case, he was drafted in the third round by the Tennessee Titans. <laughs> I, I hope. <laughs> I don't think you can say he's going to go. Let's just work on him being a winner. <laughs> no, this is, this is Brady's exact timeline all over again. He just went in the third round this time, not the sixth. Well, so as we said, you uh, your team got uh, Malik Willis. Atlanta got Desmond Ryder, who was the second QB off the board. You happy about that there, Kev, or no? You give him crap. Ooh. <laughs> it's okay, Kev. You, you can be honest. <laughs> you don't know Cincinnati, Cincinnati's quarterback, Peter? No. Jesus. I thought you watched sports. Yes. <laughs> anyway, so the last thing we got here is that uh, there was no running backs taken the first round. Yeah. First time since 2014. And we were all wrong except for Yosh. Yeah. Yosh said zero when we had the combine episode. That's right. We talked about this. Because I, I knew what I was talking about. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> I mean, I had to, right? I called Kenny Pickett at seven. I called zero fucking running backs. Uh, what else did I call? <laughs> not, the not the first overall. overall. <laughs> <laughs> and you didn't get Jordan Davis with. Uh, you made a lot of fucking hot takes. No, I didn't. I didn't call AJ Brown getting traded either. But. I mean, <laughs> if you just keep spewing out takes, eventually one of them is going to be right. This is true. <laughs> That's why I throw out lukewarm ones because they have a better chance to be fucking right. <laughs> Fire a pot of spaghetti at the wall. A few noodles are going to stick. All right. Makes so, mess, though, man. <laughs> at least you know it's done. Yeah. Exactly. So the Bears like we were talking about, did not have a first-round pick because of Justin Fields, but they did have a second-round pick. And they picked Kyler Gordon out of Washington. Ooh. 39th pick. He's a cornerback. And I know Yosh is so pumped for this guy. It's jacked. I'm jacked. So I was reading that head coach Matt Uberflus said that he thinks that this guy is a starter. <laughs> In the nice. NFL. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, just as you said uh, previously, he better be a fucking starter <laughs> taking him at the 39th pick. Uh, but it does look good. Like the back end, they also picked up a safety uh, with their next pick, I believe. Uh, and so it kind of looks like the uh, the back end is going to be, uh, you know, 
half decent. They might have some uh, hiccups this year being uh, there's some young guys, uh, rooks back there, but uh, hey, if they can solidify that back end, uh, I still think they need to work on uh, the offense a little bit, but I'm okay with, uh, I'm okay with safeties and corners. Probably more than a little bit. I mean, yeah, yeah, <laughs> probably. But if they obviously figure that they could, uh, you know, fill up those role player guys in the uh, in the first round, which maybe they should be role players. Maybe they, maybe they should be trying to get some starters. You but... mean second round? <laughs> well, uh, yeah, second round. <laughs> anything <laughs> before what they. Had. <laughs> but, um, yeah, we'll have to see how how it shakes down and. I don't know. They had eight picks. They had 11 picks overall, eight in the final day. So that, uh, you know, that's a lot of picks. It's a lot of young guys, but there are, there may be gems, you know, diamonds in the rough type thing. And hopefully they are, but we'll see. We'll see new GM, new coach, bunch of new players here. I don't know how many guys are of those are actually going to start, but it'll be uh, it'll be an interesting year. We're just going to fly by the seat of our pants and see how she goes. So some late day three picks, definitely a strategy of Super Bowl 56 champions, the Los Angeles Rams. Oh, who really? Didn't have, who didn't have any picks in the first two rounds. And uh, I, did, I didn't know they won the Super Bowl. Oh, that's, that's <laughs> weird. Really? Okay. I got to yeah, so let you know. Get more you, more. You've never, never mentioned it. Never. <laughs> <laughs> but as I said, they didn't have any in the first two rounds, barely in the third. They were right near the end there. Not even the top 100 picks. With 104 pick, they take Logan Bruss, guard from Wisconsin, which I don't know. I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) The only thing I know is the Rams have two other guys from Wisconsin on that line, and that O-line is great. So I'm fine with them grabbing another guy from Wisconsin. These guys are just meat potato guys that just know how to – road grade right like just just run people over so that's what i will take there jesse's pre-draft uh, prep stops at number 100 so <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't look into so any close. So close. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit you know who's didn't who's pre, pre uh, nfl pre, <laughs> wow would you like to start that over, start over? <laughs> okay all right you know whose NFL prep didn't stop at 100? It's Kev. What happened in the later rounds? Uh, I believe it was 180th, so it would have been like close in the sixth round. The uh, Buffalo Bills went out and took the 21-year-old Matt Ariza. Or so Ariz- Ariza? I would say that's Ariza, yeah. Ariza, yeah. Yeah. He uh, went to um, San Diego State. Um, sorry, he went to school at season end. Matt was averaging a 51.19 yards punt. Wait, wait, uh, a punter, yes, a punter in a six round, yes, sir. Huh, interesting. Yeah, I mean, now that it, seems, seems like the right place to take a hunter. Why not? It? Yeah, well, I mean, if you can take it. If you can what take about your coach. whole spiel about Brady going to the sixth yeah, round? If you can take a quarterback I mean, in the sixth round, I mean. That would have been fine, except this year's Brady went in the third round <laughs> at the Titans. We already went over this. We got, a, we got a little bit smarter over the past two decades, you know? <laughs> so he was actually breaking uh, NCAA records um, with doing these uh, 51.19 yards. Uh, was also um, was held by Braden Man, um, Man, who played for the Texas A&M at 2018, which his average was 50.98 yards. Uh, Matt at one time had a punt that went at least 86 yards and a 50-yard field goal in the same game, which also did it into back-to-back weeks. Uh, there was only one punt that was 80-plus yards um, last year in the NFL, Uh, Before that, there was one other one, which was in 2013, uh, which the vid all knows that we all put, um, you know, the the Bicosh on a full season. So we all had a shortened season. Um, Oh, fuck. COVID. I'm like, the vid? What are you showing us? A video? (laughs) What video is this? Gotcha. (laughs) Yeah, sorry, man. I'm thinking video. (laughs) Yeah, man, the vid is what I called it. 
Now, Matt um, made 10 of 14 field goal attempts in the 2020 season. Uh, Matt would also become their punter and had an average of 49.8 yards on five punts. So as um, we all know, we're all little yeah, at heart Buffalo Bill fans. So I'd like to welcome Matt into that uh, mafia. Now, guys, let me hear about your thoughts in regards to this, uh, I say, as what um, they're saying, a left-legged punting god. All right. So if he's going to be a field goal kicker, place kicker, I don't mind this pick. But if he's going to be a punter, I think this is asinine. I, I understand that he is a good a good kicker, a good uh, punter. Uh, he's got a hell of a leg. But when you can get other players that you have a bigger need for, uh, and you know maybe the Bills don't have as big of a need as some player or some other teams in the sixth round, <coughs> Bears. But, uh, but what I'm getting at here is like Buffalo punts an average of three times a game last year okay do you need to waste this pick on a punter to to change field position three times in the game in my field opinion position is is a big thing like i know the offense is up in the league but field position is still huge but did but did the bear uh, sorry the bills struggle with field position last year they scored fucking touchdowns so they fucking booted after every time right I just, I just think that this is, although I got nothing against a player, I just don't think that this is, I don't know, punters. It wasn't, it wasn't a smart be, pick. They shouldn't be drafted, man. <laughs> like, they shouldn't be drafted. This, this is a punting god, not just I, a punter. I don't right. know, man. Like I said, if, if he was going to the Jacksonville Jaguars, the Miami Dolphins, like teams that punt a lot, then oh, Miami you know, might be good this year. Okay, the Atlanta Falcons. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Hey, I'd take them. <laughs> then in that sense, because you're going to be cons- like, I don't know what the averages are for those teams, but because I only specifically looked up the bills. But if they're, you know, eight, 10 punts a game, obviously you, you got to get your offense better so you don't punt as much. But then this is a little bit more warranted for me. So, you know, I just don't think that the, the bills needed this at this spot. I'm glad they didn't pick him any earlier, because then I'd be really. It wasn't a first round pick. No, but kickers have gone in the first round, probably not punters. Uh, yeah, I just don't think that this was a wise pick. But hey, I I've been wrong plenty of times before, and you know, I guess I should. I guess I'll say hopefully I am wrong on this one. But I mean, if he really is as good as Kev thinks he is, like if he's really a fucking punting god. Even on those three punts, like if you're in, if it's the, if it's the Super Bowl and you got to punt a couple times because you're against the top defense in the league. The Rams. Yeah, we're the top defense in the league. (laughs) It'll be there. It it could be the difference to have a punter be able to get them pinned down inside the five yard line instead of coming back to the 20 or whatever. That could make a significant difference. I get what you're saying. The Buffalo doesn't punt very often because their offense is fucking lights out. Mm-hmm. So maybe Buffalo is a team that it doesn't make a ton of sense for. But if they're out of need and they see this guy as like a, a good special teams player can make a big difference sometimes. Of course. And maybe, I mean, that's, look at Devin maybe that's all you need. <laughs> look, Devin Hester, that's all he did with special teams. Right, and he's probably the he best. was a receiver too. Yeah, sometimes. he's probably the best returner of all time. Yeah, like you know, it's so so I totally agree with that. I just I don't know, man. I, like I maybe said, he's a place kicker. Okay, but maybe yeah, if, but he, he can place kick too, though. I mean, that's what I'm saying. I mean, he's a place kicker, field goal kicker. But I mean, for the guy that's still, I mean, to boot a punt that far. I mean, he's probably not going to be there as a punter. Well, I assume he may only be yards. there as a. As a kicker, like a field goal kicker. But the 80 yards, I assume, is not in the air. That's like... No, that's total. No, total. And that's that's more than just the kick. That depends on the team receiving it and the the rest of the special teams that are chasing down the punt as well, right? And probably hey, the that, wind, That punt, punt probably, like, went over the guy's head and 
right just he what he chased the guy he chased after it mm-hmm. yeah that's probably what happened with that uh what i think about this is for buffalo's sake this might put them maybe and it's not gonna put them over the top but it's gonna give them a good special teamer now they don't have to worry about punting right and then it also gives them a backup kicker if your kicker goes down now i do believe they're they have a young kicker there um, that they drafted. I think they drafted him as well. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, can't remember his name offhand. But... Yeah, I can't remember. I think he was hurt last year a lot too, but I think he's still on the team. He was just uh, IR'd for the season or something. But anyway, so he, they were, like, you need good special teams even to win in this, this, uh, the NFL. Like, the Rams are garbage special teams the whole season, and then they actually came all came together near the end of the season. And it helps. It can change the game, and for them to draft one, I understand Josh's point. Like you're taking a place of someone that you're going to take a that has a high ceiling, but might have like injury history or uh-huh. is playing at a lower level when they could have been playing at a higher level. Like there's a lot of different things that you can pick there in that six six round. Could have been Tom Brady. Yeah. So it's. <clears throat> It's it's difficult to say like not to to get one in the sixth round. Maybe like in the seventh, maybe I could see that. I think uh, Pat McAfee was drafted as well too. But yeah. the problem with if you want that guy, you go get them because in undrafted, no they, they the guy they can pick where they want to go at mm-hmm. that point. So they made sure. I don't know if they had a seventh round pick or not. They were if they traded it away. Um, so maybe it was maybe their last pick or not. I don't know. But I can see if they want the guy, then you go and get it. That's There's a lot of things that a lot of teams do that don't make sense, and then sometimes they work out, sometimes they don't. Yeah. But you got to take and, chances and trust your scouting department on that. And a punter is the kind of position that you only ever notice the guy if he's really good or really bad. Exactly. Like if it's just a average punter, you fucking won't even know the guy's name. He just punts it sometimes. Happy days. Yeah. Unless and he that's fucking I, lasts for thirty five years, like fucking like Shane Leckler, Leckler used to, right? Like he kicked forever, and like he was good. He was above average for sure. But you know, that's that's the other way too uh, to know your punters, <laughs> your kickers <laughs> when they last thirty years in the league. <laughs> but that's well, another thing to your argument about the uh, that you don't think you should go there is because now they're set at that position, right? They're a team that maybe didn't ha- weren't set at the punter position, and now they are. Yeah, and that's fair. And, you know, I just feel like there's always O-line and D-line help that you can get. You and know? I'm all, I also agree with that as well. But so, they've, been, they've been building up that defense for a while now, and that offense is tough to shut down. Yeah, and like I said, maybe this was their that maybe this they thought this was their biggest need at this point in the draft, and and that's why they went out and got him. It's just it's just not the not the spot I would have drafted him at. But you know, kudos on your point there, Jess. Like you know, maybe the next maybe the next pick he would have gone, you know, because somebody else needs a punter, right? And he's obviously going to be. I mean, he's obviously good in NC two A. So uh, you know, and typically that would translate, especially for a kicker. You just you're just booting the fucking ball. The corners are the same corners, like you know. <laughs> <laughs> sure, you might get a little bit more pressure on you, but uh, but uh, I don't know. Like I, you know, ten for fourteen in the 2020 season as a field goal kicker, and he only had an average of 49 yards, or was that for punting? Uh, punting, I believe, was for um, his average. Which is like, really yeah. Good. Which is really, really good. I know, but he only had five punts in 2020. That doesn't seem right. But because if like w- there, there's a very limited, you know, very yeah, limited that, uh, that sample, is a small sample size, right? Yeah. So if that's all there was, and, and then I mean, last year he would have played. I'm, you know, I would assume. So I wonder what uh, we don't have his numbers up here for that, but um, you know, just because you kick one or two long doesn't necessarily mean you're a good kicker. Or punter, whatever. I mean, sorry, if you're a kicker and you kick along, it means you're probably pretty good. But as a punter, you know, you got to be able to place it in the corners. You got to be able to put backspin on it. Uh, and if you can only kick it 60 plus yards and the ball keeps going forward, you're probably going to get a lot of touchbacks. Yeah, you want those inside the 20s. Mm-hmm. So right. it'll be interesting. We'll see how, how this shakes out. And I mean, I could be fucking 
eating my own words after the first or second week, you know, they might make this crazy play and maybe he'll make like a fucking big ass tackle. Like, uh, was it a, uh, Brian, was it Brian Borman? He was a fucking Buffalo bill in the pro bowl. I think he fucking, <laughs> no, you're thinking Sean Taylor. I think she well, Sean Taylor smoked Brian Mormon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure that's what it was. <laughs> Maybe he'll be the other way and he'll be the smoker as it was a smoky, smoky. but <laughs> no, it'd be very interesting to see what this guy can actually do in the uh, NFL. I mean, NCAAs. I mean, it's, it's the uh, farm team is what you guys like to say, but let's see what we can do in the big leagues. I mean, I think the last time in the bigs was last year. Um, where Corey Bor- Borjowski, I think it is, or oh, Cortez, yeah, he kicked an 82 yard against Chicago. A, so, a punt, yes, yeah, but that likely went over somebody's head and bounce and bounce and bounce, and- yeah. And I believe the other, other one was in 2013 with a, a Robert um, Malone, he did an 84 yard kick. So uh, let's see what this guy can do in the NFL. I mean, if he's averaged in there, well, not average, but kicked an 86. It'd be interesting to see what he, uh, what he actually can fucking just let that left leg boom go. There's only so much field you can use. Right. Yeah. I mean, That's being, a huge change of possession, right? Yeah. Like you're close into your own zone and you can punt that ball down to the, like you said, 20 or 15 yard or get it down to the five yard line. That's fucking impressive. So again, I, I'd like to welcome to the the mafia of Buffalo. I mean, he should have to start his career by fucking jumping through a table. Through a table. Yeah. With flames for sure. I mean, he doesn't have to do with flames for me, but <laughs> <laughs> we don't want him to get hurt. <laughs> want to wreck that leg. So I guess we're gonna jump into our MVP here, guys. In a few moments. This week's MVP of the Toronto Maple Leafs, yeah. number 34, yeah. Austin Matthews, for being the first player to score 60 goals in an NHL season in over a decade. Yeah. Last player to achieve the feat, Steven Stamkos, also with 60. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Tampa Bay and a London night. Boo. <laughs> <laughs> Always on the enemy. Always. Uh, that was back in the 11 12 season. He was only 21 years old. Uh, the only other 60 goal season of the cap era was Ovechkin in 07 08, where he put up 65 in one of the best goal scoring seasons probably ever. Uh, Austin Matthews is also the first Leaf to ever hit 100 points in a season. Uh, tallying 106 on the campaign. And Marner was so close, getting to 97 and being rested for the final game of the year. So very nearly went from zero ever centennial players to two in the same season, but wasn't to be. What, sorry, Pietro, were you saying that he was the first to do 100? Yep. Austin Matthews? Yep. Challenge. Okay. Oh. Sittler's also done it. No. Nope. Sittler's had 117 <laughs> nope. points. Not on the Leafs. Not on, on the Leafs? Yeah, 117. Oh, shit. You might be right. I got this one. I got this. Carry on. I hope not. But... <laughs> Anywho. Uh, okay. Uh, that's it. So, Matthews. He's rattled. <laughs> <laughs> Austin Matthews for scoring 60 goals in a game where, uh, in a season where he only played uh, 73 games. I mean, our yeah, MVP. Pete, you're fucking way wrong. Yeah. Okay. God damn. There has been multiple. There has been one, two, three, four other players. Well, sorry. There has been only two other players, but four times to to have more than 100 points. What, uh, what, what about in the the sap <laughs> the sap uh, calorie era? Oh, was it in the salary? Is that what you said? The salary cap era? No, no I, I did not. No. Okay, no. so 
<laughs> but I was curious. I'm curious if the if the, that is no, no, because uh, it was <laughs> Sittler did it twice, a uh, hundred points and a hundred and seventeen points, and my boy Killer did it twice, a hundred eleven, and he is the all time Maple Leaf point in one season leader with a hundred and twenty seven. Uh, that was in 92, 93, which makes a whole lot of fucking sense if you remember that year. Yep. Oh, well, sense. You know of the know. year. You don't remember it, but yeah, you right. you know of it. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin and I remember it. Well, that was Actually, Kevin's favorite player, too. That, so. <laughs> that year was the reason, that was the year that I switched from being a Brett Hall St. Louis Blues fan because they the, the Blues lost to the Leafs because of Dougie. And Dougie became my favorite player and never looked back because he was awesome. Not that Brett Hall wasn't, but Dougie is Dougie. He's a grinder, but he was a fucking superstar. I have a little bit of love for Dougie. I might even just go get my jersey. <laughs> I should have put it on. Fuck! <laughs> Only someone had suggested that. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> but they well, <laughs> I don't know why I thought that uh, Matthews was the first to 100. That's what happens when you write your own notes. God damn it. But I start plagiarizing them. <laughs> it was wrong. <laughs> or just double check. <laughs> ah, who has the time? <laughs> so, although he's not the first and not the second, he is the third. That's what I tried to say. The third <laughs> ever to get to 100 points. Austin Matthews with 60 goals. You're on 106 MVP. points. And 106 points. MVP. Who cares? That's happened all the time, apparently. God damn it. <laughs> Let's fight two other guys. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, AM34. Get us a fucking playoff win here. Series yeah. win. Let's go. Absolutely. So staying on the topic of AM34, he has locked up the Rocket Richard Trophy with his 60 goals. Uh, <laughs> Guess he's just a hater. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> uh, McDavid locked up Garrett Ross with 123 points. Uh, which brings us to the Hard Award. The league's MVP. Who's your boy's final choice for the Hart Award winner based on what we've seen with the season now completely finished? I think Jesse should start, fucker. I was just going to say that. Oh, really? Jesse, okay. why don't you start? All right, since, well, since, since you're wrong, <laughs> no, man, it's McDavid. Who else? I'll tell you who else because <laughs> you're wrong. It's Austin freaking Matthews. Pappy's got this in the bank for sure. I don't even think McDavid is number two, probably Huberto. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna follow you right there, Jesse Sneezy. You're fucking wrong, dude. <laughs> it's definitely Austin hey, I'm going to be the Peter of the Rookie oh. of the Year. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. Wait, wait. Yeah. Let me jump in. Let me jump in. Jesse, you're fucking wrong. <laughs> it's going to be AM34. <laughs> so, just to uh, throw some fuel to the fire here, even though you're still wrong, uh, I double checked in the other 60 goal seasons in the salary cap era. If those guys won the heart, the years that they put up 60. Alexander Ovechkin, 07 08, 65 goals, a heart trophy in his trophy case. Steven Stamkos, 2011 2012, 60 goals. Evgeny Malkin has a heart trophy in his trophy case hmm. with 10 more points. And McDavid has more than 10 more points than Austin Matthews. Hmm. All the more reason to go. He's going to get it. But he's not going to get it. It's awesome. All day long. Not a chance. For sure been the better player this season. Is it? Is it the best like MVP of the whole it's, league? Or is it like the best player on your team throughout the season? Then? Like, so is it, you know what I mean? Like, it's the most outstanding player, even though it's called the most valuable player. So, yeah. It's funny, Pedro, you can look up all those stats for that, but you can't see oh. that uh, there's a hundred oh, point. Oh. <laughs> the, the point wasn't enough for you, eh, Kev? Yeah, the go for the jugular, too. <laughs> so I had initially said that, uh, what the fuck is his name, Igor? 
I, I'm pretty sure I said Igor was going to win the heart because he was playing lights out. And then but, he came to shit. Yeah. Yeah, he did just kind of fall apart there. Not that he completely I mean, fell apart, but from, from the race. He's probably still going to win a Vezina. Yeah, right, but from the heart race. <laughs> from the heart race, he fell apart. But be, just because these other guys kind of, they just ran away with it. It's yes. hard for a goalie to win the award, too. It doesn't happen often. Mm. Not sticking to your guns. Come on. Hey, in, this, in this case, you have to <laughs> switch it up, man. <laughs> so three of us are right. It's Austin Matthews. Jesse's wrong. Thinks it's McDavid. Sorely mistaken. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. Uh, what about the Norris Trophy? The league's best defenseman. Who do you guys have there? Hey, Jesse, I think you're right on this one, bro. I got uh, Josie. I got Josie. Lead, lead us off again. Uh, I went with Josie. Uh, Roman Josie. Yeah. I, first 90 point defenseman since exactly. uh, uh, we Ray just Bork. recently talked about him. That's why I went with him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you recall, he was our MVP last episode. And I told you last episode when he was the MVP that even though he's the MVP and the first defenseman to hit 90 points in 30 years he probably isn't going to win the norse because he's not it's going to be kale mccarr who is uh just slightly behind in terms of total points but has a lot more goals and just has had a fantastic season it's kale mccarr all day long I'm, gonna... I, I'm as sure as I was that Austin was the first 100-point leaf, all right? <laughs> <laughs> You're wrong. I'm going to go with Yoshi as well. I mean, Yoshi? What? Uh, I'm not winning the fucking Norris, man. <laughs> Fuck, you ever see me play hockey? I would trip over the blue line, man. <laughs> um, yeah. But I think Jesse's right. I'm right. You're both are wrong on this one. No. No. You and Jesse are wrong. It's Kale McCarr. I'm pretty sure I took Kale McCarr last year to win it too. Uh, that was probably on a flyer. He probably didn't deserve to win it last year, but I had high holes for him. And I'm, as Jess said, sticking with my guns for a year. <laughs> and uh, he's going to do it. But Pete, you're right. He has been playing lights out. I mean, Yossi's been playing good too, but, but uh, McCarr has been, he's like a fourth forward out there, but can still get back and play defense. So he, he's phenomenal. So. He's not scoring as much as Yossi. Well, I guess helping scoring. Yeah, I get you. I goals get you. matter more. Yeah. We'll we'll see it in the Hart Award and in the Norris. Goals <laughs> matter more. <laughs> All right, let's move on to playoff matchups. Uh they are set. And it's uh our last chance to change our cup winner for those whose cup winner maybe didn't make the playoffs. Oh, no, we're changing the rules. <laughs> Who, whose cup winner didn't make the playoffs? I prefer not to comment on that. It's like the NBA, right? <laughs> I prefer not to comment on that. <laughs> uh, rough, rough, rough year for takes on the, uh, on the uh, on the winner. Uh, anyway, why don't we kick it off with uh, Jesse again? You're leading us off here. I like it. Yeah, I have no problem doing this. <laughs> and to uh, everyone that listens that we know is mainly all Leaf fans and the Leafs will be going at it against Tampa which was my pick at the beginning of the year and again sticking to my guns and going with Tampa no has there ever been a three-peat in the yeah, oh, yeah. there's yeah, been a four yeah, yeah the yeah. fourth the Islanders. Four feet. even I know that the Islanders did a oh, yeah a four a four the bossy a, the bossy a, era a quad peat yeah. Quad Pete. I think it would just be a four Pete. Yeah, four Pete. <laughs> Why do you guys keep talking? To me? Why do you keep calling my name Pete? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I'm bump. <laughs> uh-huh. anyway. All right. Well, I am gonna stick by my guns like I did with Macar, and not <laughs> like I did with uh, AM34. But uh, <laughs> I'm gonna stick with my guns. I'm gonna say the Leafs uh, because it's the Leafs. They're they're getting, you know, they're they're getting rid of all those. Uh, all the weight on their shoulders by not winning first round series. And they're going to get one this year and they're going to keep going on and keep going on and uh, knocking out the defending two time back-to-back champs is going to be huge. And they're going to go on to, uh, to a big Stanley cup victory. I love it. I yeah. love it. Kev, feel. You feel the same way? 
Oh man, my heart's with the Leafs. I mean, guaranteed, uh, I'd like to see them do something if they can make themselves out of the first round. I, I, I might put both feet back on that bang wagon. But as of right now, no, I'm sticking with my guns. I'm sticking with the Colorado, Colorado Avalanche. Mm. Well, not a, not a bad choice, man. No, definitely not bad in the, uh, in the weaker West, but there's still some formidable opponents over there. Well, wait, wait, hold on, Pete. Hang on a second here. I just happened to pull up our newly chosen. Uh, I know. I, I, I took the Leafs as my bracket because, like I said, right there, my heart's with the Leafs. Kevin's, but I'm sticking uh, to my guns in regards to the Colorado. But you don't even have Colorado making it to the cup. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> like, it looks he's, like they're going to be bounced in the first round. You got them. Yeah. No, I, I, have a, I have a Calgary Toronto final. He's hedging it. So do I, by the way. He's hedging his bets big time. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Pete. So who do you got now that your uh, your Golden Knights have uh, fled the fucking season? Yeah, yeah. I had the Golden Knights early in the season, which, God damn it, wasn't a bad choice then. But sure. <laughs> injuries happened. Some cap shenanigans happened. Some stupid trades happened. It didn't happen. And they didn't make the playoffs. So I'm off the Golden Knights to win the Stanley Cup this year because uh, they are not competing. Shows what you know for NHL, right? Eh? Yeah, you yeah. lost a point against in NHL, and now I mean, you can't even pick a winner to make the playoffs. I'm probably the least knowledgeable here when it comes to <laughs> hockey. Probably. This is why people skip through the NHL segment. People. I mean, that's, <laughs> yeah. I can't even blame them. <laughs> <laughs> the product is uh, is is what it is. <laughs> well, despite you cutting me deep, Josh. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. <laughs> you're right about the Hart Award. It's going to be Austin Matthews. You're right about the Norris. It's going to be Kale McCarr. And God damn it, you're right about the Stanley Cup winner. Go Leafs, go baby. Yeah. This is the year. Yeah. This is the year. <laughs> I'm on the Leafs. Can't wait for the after the first round to see you guys all crying. Yeah, four games were done. <laughs> oh, I fuck. said six. I, I said in six. The first round's the only hard part, Jesse. That's the only place we keep losing. Once That's you're past right. the first round, smooth sailing. Smooth sailing. Smooth sailing. <laughs> and you know this how? <laughs> I mean, there From was the 92, 93 so. year. Yeah. <laughs> oh, fuck. It wasn't so, for, for my non-favorite player with the, the stick. It would have been a... Gretzky with the fucking yeah, high mm-hmm. stick, yeah. It would have been a Montreal-Toronto final. That would have been fucking awesome. Yeah, that would have been awesome. Yeah. And the Leafs would have won, too. Probably would have, yes, yeah. they would have. Yeah. That would have been awesome. Because not, the fucking... The Jays just won, too, right? So that right. would have been fucking and awesome. Then the Argos, you're, you're and the Argos saying, also won, too. The, the uh, who Cup. cares, Kev? Who gives a fuck? I, I'm just saying, man. I mean, they actually win in '93 yeah. or '92, yeah. like those yes. two years, yeah. Yeah, because oh. I mean, it been uh, it would have been the Grey Cup, the World Series, and it should have been the Stanley. Man, that would have been. Well, it couldn't happen in '93 because of a rogue high stick that didn't get called. But 2022 is a whole new year. The Jays are looking real strong. The Leafs are coming into the playoffs hot. I believe this is the year. This is the year of Toronto. So it's how many happening. games? How many games do you think it'll take for uh, the Leafs to get out of the first round? Six. Well, six either way, like lose, yeah. lose in six or win. I mean, <laughs> either yeah, no, way, they're getting out of the first round. Just yeah, depends no, on which side it, of the coin you're on. It, it does it, yeah, either way, either either or, it's going to happen in six. Six. I mean, the Leafs and Tampa are two very strong teams. Tampa's obviously back back champs. The Leafs put up 115 point season and are coming in as uh, with home ice advantage. I think it's going to go six as well. I could easily see seven. I don't think it'll be any less than that. My thought is they split the first four, and then uh, the Leafs managed to close it out in the final two games of the series. I see no sweeps at all in this first round. Not one. Uh, yeah, me neither. I'm with you. There are probably one surprise because there always seems to be. But yeah, yeah it's going to be think... Toronto against Tampa. Uh, easy, no. hopefully. <laughs> I'm saying Leafs in seven. I think it's going to take go the distance here. Um, 
maybe even into extras might even go into some overtime in game seven. Oh, there's going to be, yeah, well, for sure. my heart cannot handle it. I, I definitely <laughs> think this is going to go right to the very bitter end here in the first you're, round. You're going to make my kid be raised by a single mom. I'm going to affect him. <laughs> I have a heart attack. That uh, you'll be all right. Um, in terms of sweeps, right. I'm going to, I'm going to take a hot take and I'm saying that Colorado sweeps. I know that's a hot take, but I mean, that's if, if there, Slip if there was uh there was a place that that might That's be it. probably the one yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. well you're all wrong nope the leafs anyway moving on <laughs> <laughs> no, no need for further commentary here <laughs> the one hey Josh, thing what are you talking about here? is finish and it'll get to game seven like yosh yosh got one thing right there but they will not win <laughs> they are gonna lose because that's what they do in game seven I mean, as of the last decade worth of proof, you're right. I but, mean, like it's just it's just mathematically correct. But this will be this will be the first if Ever. it goes that far. Yeah. This will be the first game seven in front of a full crowd since they last won a game seven back in two thousand four for the Leafs at home. Because if you recall, the only other home series they had in the past decade that went to Game 7, because they always go to Game 7, but they're usually the road team. The only time they were the home team was last year against Montreal, and we were right in the thick of the COVID fiasco, and the only, I think the only game they had home fans at was Game 7, and it was like 2,500 fans or something. Hardly any. So I think the crowd in the building at home Gonna make a big difference in the series. I feel in it going back to 2004, baby. At least we're winning the series. But and I won't, one... don't want to cut you off there, too, Pedro. But one thing I like about the Leafs, whenever they go to Florida, what do you hear in the stands? You hear Leafs fans, baby. you don't hear, you hear go, you don't Leafs hear, go. You hear go, Leafs go. That's in right. Regards. So they, they have home ice. Now, Even I don't away games. think that's going to be the case in the playoffs. Oh, you watch. You're going to hear more Go Leafs go than you're going to hear go. It's go also the go. summer or starting to the summer. So all the snowbirds are back here, yeah. right? So, the, and they would be the ones that would be cheering Go Leafs go. But I don't know if they're back yet. Like they would be back if it was not round one. Me, well, yeah, fair enough. Many are back that don't give a fuck about sports. Right. But person. the ones that do are sitting there hanging out and watching the Leafs. All right, so I just have one other uh, thing here before we move on. Uh, over under um, uh, Matthew's goals in this series. What do you think the over under is? Five. Like uh, I'm, I'm gonna say that's that's probably what it is. Like say let's say five point five. So yeah. you think you think over or under five point five goals in the series? Oh, over. I mean over. that's that's a lot. Like when you when you really think about it, like he he got sixty in. Uh, a, a season which is 82 games for him it was only 73 games because he missed a bunch but so he's he's scoring at less than a goal per game which is still really really good mm. and almost never happens but still to put up five goals or six i guess to beat the spread well and, i don't know that that's just my random spread like i'm not so yeah. what, what did he do you know what he did per game what the points per game were what it ended up at do some really fast math and find out. Uh oh, don't do it in your head. No. <laughs> You've lost we've, a few a few challenges seen, on seen, math. We've seen how that goes. <laughs> there was a fucking wasn't yeah. there a salary cap? Uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> point eight two. Point eight two. Okay, so it wouldn't be that high then. So it's gonna be probably three and a half would be three and a half or four and a half would be the the over under. So I mean, if that. if you just parlay his season uh, rate into seven games it'd be five and a half but it's the playoffs it's different in theory it's harder to score i'd probably say it's set at four and a half that'd be my guess and do you take the over i'll take I, over i do for I'm them to win the this no series what it's at. he's gotta he's gotta contribute he's mm -hmm. gotta put the puck in the net and i think he will I the man the man is on fire he will well, not be stopped. He cannot I'm be stopped. the opposite way as per our usual. Yeah, because you're hockey. a bitch. And we're moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I've been like the most right on here. 
I'm the most winningest person points and penalties. Like, my opinion matters. How many, how many came? I hockey, mean, to you. Really? To you, yeah. To <laughs> you. all the listeners. I, I just keep getting everything right, boys. Like, you can't. You like, clearly haven't seen the DMs that You can say get. the same thing, too, with the Leafs. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I know what I'm talking about. That's all I got to say. All right. But so since what you say doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> one last question before we move on from this. Uh, who's actually the underdog in this series? I want to know what you guys think. Because the least did better in the regular season. They Tampa. have the better record. They have home ice. Tampa. I'm pretty sure the money has it as the Leafs as the favorites. Tampa. But the reality of the situation, the Leafs haven't won a playoff series since 2004. Tampa are the reigning back-to-back Stanley Cup champs. Kucherov was out for, I think, half the season this year. Maybe they would have finished above the Leafs if he was there the whole time. So who's actually the underdog in your eyes going into this series? Tampa. So it's very close on bet three six five. Uh, the Leafs are minus one twenty five favorites. The Lightning are plus one hundred five underdogs. Um, this is a tough one to to call, Pete. Uh, you know what? Just so that we don't. Uh, you know, just so that we exceed expectations, I'm going to say that the Leafs are the underdogs here, and based on playoff hockey. Yeah, I, you know. and I think I think you're right. Like the history yeah. has shown us that. Where did all this confidence come? Or not? Not the where did all the confidence beforehand come from, boys? I'm, we're still confident. We're just saying they're the underdog. You just yeah. saying that they're the underdogs. That's showing that you, you're not. Oh, I'm, saying they're Tampa, against, huh? they're I'm against... saying Tampa's the underdog. Tampa. You hear me tell me, fuck, I said Tampa like about 10 times. I think think Tampa's the underdog, and they're going to play like that. You think the back-to-back reigning Stanley Cup champion is the underdogs in the first round of the playoffs? Yep. Yep. What what was the point difference between Tampa and Toronto? Like Uh, less than 10 points? It's it's around 10, I think. I mean, maybe if it was more than that, but that's why they're – I guess with the – the way that the, the playoffs are set up with the seating and whatnot, but so I, Jesse, why are you hard on Tampa if they're the underdogs here? Yeah, why don't think the Leafs where's are your win? confidence, bud? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just they they finished way more better, and like you said, Matthews didn't play a, all eighty two games, so yeah, Kucherov missed like, half and they the finished season. above them. Yeah. They also they also beat them eight one in their last appearance, but that was their backup. Yes, and there was no way Soup. There was no way Soup was going into that game. No, no chance. Kev's in his uh, Soup jersey, by the way. So well, five points. Did there's only five points. There's only five points, so they are very close. Yeah. That's why I'm and, going with the Lightning being the over, uh, overdog, if you will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And with Cooch missing half the season, back-to-back champs, I'm with you. Like the, and they I'm got like fucking Tampa. Pat Maroon, who's won a bunch of fucking cups. He's like the oh, he just doesn't lose. Yeah, <laughs> he's like the uh, he's the what do you call it? The, he's their their prize in the back pocket, right? The uh, the rabbit's foot, the good luck charm. Is yeah, what, I, yeah. what I'm trying to say. Um, now, did you guys see when uh, Tampa went to the the White House? Did not you not yet. hear the president fuck up Gary, Gary Bettman's name? No, no, I didn't Come hear that on. part. Oh, my God. He's up at the stand. And he goes, Gary Batman. Nice. <laughs> he that, just it? watched Batman the night before. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. But you, you see one of the uh, players in the background who's holding on to like a silver stick just start doing – it wasn't like laughing, but like um, – <laughs> Yeah, like, he was about to laugh. Yeah, yeah. oh, because he said Gary Batman. And I was he, like, he also called Steven Stamkos old. Yeah. Which is pretty funny because yeah. like Stamkos is getting up there. He's played like 14 seasons or something like that. But was Joe this Biden, Biden or is, the Trumpster? No, it, it was, was Biden. Biden. Biden's the president, yeah. you fuck. I know. I don't know. I don't know when the fuck this was. <laughs> yeah. And the only oh, the only other one I'd like to point out too is a president that fucked up a person's name was um Clinton on Iserman. Because he Clinton goes, you know, and I mean, Iserman, Iserman's like, tough. Yeah. Iserman or if you, if you don't know, Iserman's tough. Yeah. So that was pretty funny. 
Yazirman. Yeah, Yazirman. Yes. Yeah, whatever he said. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Why does it start with a Y and a Z? <laughs> but he's Canadian. Uh, I'm, not sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what to do with this. <laughs> Anyway, that's it. At least you're going to win. First round playoffs start tomorrow. Here we go. What's going on in the NBA? Well, it's the playoffs. Did you guys know that? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Well, round one is over. Round two uh, started earlier today. But uh, just a quick recap of round one. The Suns beat the Pelicans. The Grizzlies yeah. beat the Timberwolves. The Warriors beat the Nuggets. The Mavs beat the Jazz. Boom. Boom. Heats over the Hawks, Celtics over the Nets, yeah, yeah. Bucks over the Bulls. Yeah. The 76ers over the Raptors. <laughs> <laughs> the 76ers Ooh. over the Raptors. So Ooh. let's go back to the top here. Suns over Pelicans. Uh, yes, the Suns lost two games to the Pelicans, uh, but they pretty much dominated the other four games. And they top team going into the playoffs. Do you guys think that anybody has any fucking chance whatsoever against the Phoenix Suns, or are they just going to walk away with this fucking championship? No, no, the they're walking away with it. They're walking he, away with it. Check the, the bracket. Heat, no, the Heat's going to win it. Right. The Heat's going to win it because I have the Heat, no, Heat, and the no, Suns. No. Yeah. <laughs> no. You see how he did that though? I have the Suns and the Heat. Oh shit! Uh, uh, that's so a nice. hot final. So that's <laughs> that. That's a hot take, Kev. There you that's, go. That's that's how you. Uh, I'm starting to learn how you pick your teams now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, the uh, Suns are winning it. Nobody stands a chance. It's Bucks gonna, are going to topple. Yeah. I, okay, so you guys both have East teams uh, to to win it. Uh, Pete and I both have West teams to win it. Uh, from not from brackets, but or at least mine anyway, because my brackets fucking bust. So there's no <laughs> point talking about that. But uh, I, I've said that the Warriors, and they ha- they looked pretty fucking good uh, in their series against the Nuggets. Um, they, for me, are the only team that out of the West that is going to be able to stop the Suns. Uh, it's going to be, you know, if those two match up in the next round, uh, it's going to be a hell of a series. For Gotta go sure. through Memphis first. No, I'm with you, Yosh. I, th- I think it's, it's uh, the Warriors and the Suns. I agree the Suns will get there. I think that's who I picked. Um, but I think it's the Warriors and Suns going to be fighting it out. It should be and interesting for sure. To your point, Jesse, on the on the Bucks, did you boys see Giannis's alley oop to himself today? No, I did. no, I didn't. That, no, I that, did. That's that's outrageous. Yep, yep. Off like, the board to himself. Like where was he about the free throw line? Throw it up. Yeah, yeah something like oh, that. He was he was in half. He was in in, in between. Because he was like down low. I mean, he did a spin and he had no choice but to throw it up or he's going to get called for traveling and pound it down. So he was lower than the free throw line? Yeah. So typically from the free throw spinning line. spinning too. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, for sure. And he's trying, he knows he's going to get traveled. Yeah. And he just keeps uh, it, was, it, it was extremely impressive. That's yeah, what I'm getting no. At. <laughs> Yeah. No, it was decent. I'm going to have to check this out. This highlight. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. No, it's pretty cool. Typically, if you throw it off the backboard from, say, the free th- uh, free throw line, they uh, think, especially back in the NBA Streets video game, PlayStation mm-hmm. 2, they used to call that fucking dinner served. So I don't know if that's the the real uh, nickname for that for that move, but uh, if anybody doing it at any point is pretty it's, impressive. Yeah. So, um, and the, yeah, and the man doesn't have a playoff game against the fucking Celtics. So. Yeah. And, and I think he did up, like, um, whatever – triple double or whatever they fucking yeah call his second career triple double in the playoffs i think that was why he was my mvp but i smartened up and went elsewhere with that mm-hmm. yeah speaking of the uh when do we find out the mvp by the way uh they wait until i think the playoffs are over like they did rookie of the year and they might do like dpoy and stuff like that throughout the playoffs but i think the mvp they wait but we all know that the mvp is going to be nikola Jokic. And as Kev, you mentioned before, the Denver Nuggets fucked you. Well, that's who he plays for. Right. Uh, and so they lose out in the first round in a series that I thought was going to go, oh. maybe not the distance, but it was going to go far. It was, you know, I, I was thinking six games for sure and going to be close, tough games the whole way. And they weren't. They weren't. Uh, yeah. Don't get looked like it was just kind of him out there. 
You know, there was a few guys that would put up points and play well, you know, this game, but wouldn't play good the next game type thing. So, um, you know, I think that the, uh, the injuries from uh, Porter Jr. and, and uh, Jamal Murray really, really hurt them when it comes to playoff basketball, you know, and then of course, Steph Curry. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it's Steph, right? So, and Clay has seemed to kind of find his rhythm too now. So, you know, I had said that they would be better uh, with clay i was wrong they were not better with clay but it's playoff time between uh with clay steph and draymond man that's a tough team to beat did you see draymond got ejected today no i didn't see anything today man i was working mm-hmm. all day fucking guy <laughs> draymond is just typical draymond goes up to block a shot or can't get it so he grabs a hold of his jersey and fucking rips him to the ground <laughs> what's wrong yeah with that? <laughs> yeah i mean depending on the point in the game it may n- probably nothing like you know if it's close and you need he can't score you know yeah no but, it was just you know typical dream on being typical dream on chairman's one of the best defensive players in the league that is so yeah, underrated just and come come know. the fuck down bro I mean, yeah. to shut the fuck up and you might be okay, but I, I don't mind that out of him. No, that's man, what he he's does. a defensive player. They that's what he's he talking the most shit. That that's their whole job. He doesn't. Really but he do can't be else. ejected if he's one of those guys, right? You need him on the floor. When did yeah. he get ejected though? Got- uh, it was way before the, you know, the second or the third um, quarter. He was gone. But he was gone. I, I was eating dinner. I was drinking, so I was just popping up and over there. And I looked and I saw he got ejected. What and else remember- is new, right, Pete? That's what you were trying to say there. I can see it. I can see it. <laughs> you're doing a double take on your drink. You're like, what else is new, Cab? You're drinking. <laughs> I mean, I, I, if you're a defensive player, like Jess said, though, you got to fucking, you got to chirp, you got to talk, but you got to back it up. You know, you can't, you can't be chirping and then let everybody and their brother buy you every single time. And he doesn't, he's a great defensive player and uh, he's definitely outspoken though. You know, he's got his own podcast, you know, taken after us and uh, you know, he probably doesn't have as many listeners and viewers as us, but uh, <laughs> we can give him some notes if he needs it. You know, yeah. we, can, we can help out. Yeah. Draymond, if you're listening, if you want to come on, come on, no problem. We'll, we'll kick Jesse you. out. It'll be fine. We'll give you the four one one. Kick out the guy that knows all the shit. And FYI, Kevin, you're right. It was it was in the second quarter. It was the end of the second quarter. Second quarter. Yeah, that's a, that's a tough spot to get booted then for sure in a playoff game. That's a tough spot. But so. plus, I'm talking. I'm I'm agreeing with Draymond and his play. I mean, that's what you need in the playoffs. Yeah, yeah, like, for sure. Fuck you, yo. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you're back in. All right, you're back in. <laughs> Cap, you're out. <laughs> you said Dre. You said Draymond could, shouldn't be kicked out and shouldn't be I mean, chirping. <laughs> I would like to hear them go at it. Him and uh, him and <laughs> Draymond and Cap. <laughs> regards to much of a bitch he is, in regards, you know, you just need uh, to oh, fucking relax. Oh, come on, come oh, on the show, Draymond. Oh, It'll be the- fun. This is coming from the guy that gets. I've put you in my box once before, or or several times. I think I put Draymond in my box. That's it. Know. We're tweeting Draymond. We're yeah. tweeting him. Get, get him, him on, the, on show. the show. Send sure. him the invite. Yeah, I'll slap only, him. Only and a see coward how much... wouldn't take it. <laughs> yeah, don't be a bitch, Draymond. <laughs> yeah. I got a, I got a basketball here, Draymond. I'll slap that ball out of your oh, hand and fun. see you okay. more okay. complain. Okay. Oh, yeah. 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 Don't yeah. get me fired up. Yeah, like he's not a three point shooter, but he would fucking shoot. Yeah, you yeah. like he would just yeah. dominate you. No, no, I oh, yeah. fucking blocked the shit out of him. I saw a little video and it was uh, uh-huh. Uh-huh. it was Montrezel Harris. He was like, he's a he's a half decent player, but nothing crazy. And he was playing against guys at like the YMCA, and it was just like, you see why these guys are NBA players because even oh, yeah. even the shittiest guys just destroy the the common person. <laughs> well, yeah, like when when I was a youth a teenager playing basketball on the court like sometimes there'd be guys that show up that just like you don't have a chance yeah and this is not an nba player this is just some guy but there well, it was you peter too. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough but nobody else had a chance either like these guys are tall enough to dunk and they can fucking shoot from anywhere it's just like i cannot stop you. no matter how hard i try i can't be done all right, so before we move on from the West, uh, anything else that you guys saw uh, from the West that uh, you wanted to speak on? I mean, like I said before, like the Timberwolves gave the Grizzlies a run for their money for a bit. But for a bit, yeah. They, they got their shit together. Hmm. Which, but they're, 
like I said, they're gonna lose. So if I think, you, I think I think Jaw is gonna be some like fucking phenomenal yeah. shit once again. Yeah, Jaw. He's he's amazing. He's very very good. So just going with our bracket picks here in the West, uh, just to recap here, we all took the Suns. We were right. We all took the Grizzlies. We were right. Uh, actually, Jesse and I were perfect in the West. No big deal. Uh, That's why I'm on here, because I'm perfect. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, East, the, the East is still coming, bud. Settle down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, Jesse and I both took the Warriors or the Nuggets, which means that Peter and Kevin both took the Nuggets, and they were wrong. And then the Mavericks – uh, over the Jazz, myself, Jesse, and Kevin took the Mavs, which means only one person was wrong. Dumb, we all dumb, know dumb, who that dumb. is. Now, East, um, it, let's just carry on with who we picked. Everybody took the Heat. Uh, Kevin and Peter, you guys took the Celtics. Jesse, why don't you tell me about your pick of the Brooklyn Nets? How'd that work out? And some is in play. <laughs> that was the only reason that they lost. Oh, get- <laughs> okay. Yeah. I mean... Ben Simmons, I was betting on he was going to play. That was, that was Were you thing. counting on him for four wins? Because they exactly. didn't get any. Oh, oh, oh. He's going to show up for those four <laughs> I don't know if his playoff war would be four. I mean, that's, if, that's we go to, if we don't look at last season, like, I don't want to look at last season. He was garbage in the playoffs last season, too. But I mean, there's no reason to expect With, with the Nets, I think, I think he had a great chance to do I something. I mean, special. they couldn't do any worse than they did without him, without getting a single victory. This is true, especially when you have two superstars on the team. I know. I I that was like my uh, uh, upset pick, uh-huh. and, and, and it was Boston. I want to pick Boston. Who picks Boston? Yeah, exactly. These I, I couldn't take Boston. There was no way. I mean, not that I like taking Brooklyn either, but I uh, had to. Well, I thought Brooklyn in the playoffs. I figured KD and Kyrie were gonna light some shit up and uh, and meet the Raptors in the fucking semis in the East. So, so obviously I was wrong there, but, uh, Peter, you took Boston. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I took this, Boston. That was a clear choice. I mean, so, okay. They're not, so, not getting past the bus. So, so were you guys surprised? Were you guys surprised though, that it was a sweep? Like whether you guys, you guys took Boston, but yeah, like to get zero wins out of, out of the nets, that's, uh, that's pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Chirping aside, I uh, I had full confidence that Boston would take this series. I did not think they wouldn't lose a game. That's uh, that is surprising. Yeah, Tatum Tatum played out of his mind. Yeah, that 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 was, that was the thing. Like he was just unreal, and the Nets couldn't guard him. He, it was a close but, game today. It was very like, close today, even though the Bucks K, won. But KD should have been able to do the same thing. Well, and that's the that's the the argument here now is is Tatum becoming the new KD. They they play a very similar game, you know. Obviously, uh, Tatum needs some more time to uh, to evolve into that, but um, it's definitely possible. He's a great fucking player, great player. So moving on to Jesse's Bucks, uh, we all took the Bucks to win the, the series over the Bulls, and they did quite handily at the four one. Uh, and then now they are – it's Celtics-Bucks now, correct? Is that right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So. I mean, the Bucks took them today, but it was pretty close. And, I mean, this this series, or at least for the Bucks, is going to hinge on Giannis. If he gets oh, even yeah. – if he gets even the smallest injury, the Bucks are done. Yep. yep. Right? Just like oh, yeah. um, in the team. <laughs> oh, sorry, just like just like in bitch. And I mean, the Heat, and the, the, the Heat's going to roll over these guys quick now that he's gone. I mean – it's hard to say. I don't know. I don't want to say they're going to roll over them quick because this me this is the James Harden show now, and that's what James Harden loves, right? James Harden he wants the ball in his hand every single possession, so this could open up like we we can start seeing some 30, 40 point games out of Harden now. Uh, they are going to miss the big man, obviously, um, with his uh, what does he have now? It's an orbital bone orbital. fracture. And then his his thumb is still fuckered. So, and I just want to point out and comment that I feel really, really bad that he suffered those injuries during his series against the Raptors, mm-hmm. in which he never, never once had any sort of infraction on a Raptors player. Never <laughs> once. Clean. So I Clean I just want to I just want to say my my condolences to Joel Embiid. 
for the injury he suffered hmm. as a result of a uh, pretty clean basketball player in my mind. You know, what I have to say about that? you know what I have to say about that? Fucking bitch. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Fucking bitch. <laughs> Fuck the Philadelphia 76ers. Yep. The only time I ever liked the Philadelphia 76ers was when Allen Iverson was playing. Yeah. And that'll be the only time that I like the Philadelphia 76ers. They are now one of my top hated basketball teams. Really any team out of Philly. Philly's like Boston kind of. They're not at the level of success. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they suck, but they, we hate them just but as much. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. Uh, not one of us was a fan of like the NFC Easter thing. Like, but anyway, um, so yeah, no big surprise. Just sticking here with the Bucks and the Bulls. No real big surprise there. We, you know, I had initially thought that the Bulls would be a, a contender uh, as they played very well in the middle of the season, and then they didn't after that. Yeah, <laughs> and I, and I thought it, I thought it'd be closer too, but no. Um, yep. But. Let's move into the series that matters uh, or mattered, which was the Sixers and the Raps, as uh, as we just mentioned, and uh, Joel and Bitch at the end uh, afterwards going down with injuries. Um, if you can't fucking beat them, you might as well take their big guy out, right? You might as well yep. take their big guy out. <laughs> yep. I mean, like, I'm not a big fan of anybody getting hurt, like, because I always want to no, play against the best obviously. and stuff like that. But what do you think about uh, Doc Rivers leaving him in when they were up a bunch of points and then that happening? That's dumb. Sucks I mean, to you. Doc Rivers has he's made some questionable decisions over the course of his career. He's the only uh, coach to to uh, go down like after being up 3-0 to get to to three two. No, it was three one or, or something like that. Oh, you're talking about getting up to three three? Yeah, like he, like okay. yeah. To, but to, he he has lost back. three one um, series. When the After being up three one, right? Yeah, like yeah. three times, I think. Yeah, yeah it's, times. it's been a, it's been a lot. So he, he he has been pretty poor, and again, that was another pretty poor position decision with a guy that has a thumb injury to begin with. Yep. He's always grasping at it as well, and like we we say he he's a bitch, but he definitely is. And we saw through this series, this is an amazing fucking player. Like he's unreal. Like like it's unreal. Like minus all the stupid foul calls that he gets, which bugs everyone he still hit that three at that last second getting some revenge on the raps when Kawhi did it to them mm -hmm. in game seven so it he's still a really good player like and in that series you saw that it just it, you just hate seeing all these like little fouls that he gets from people yeah so definitely some uh, questionable coaching decisions out of Doc Rivers but when you look at his history you know, it's not necessarily surprising. Uh, but after being down 3-0, the Raps played tough. They battled back to uh, to win two games, to take it to 3-2, and then they got destroyed in game six. Uh, but only in the second half. They were, I believe, down by one point one, yeah, one at, at halftime. And they were up the whole time. They were up pretty much, I think, for majority of the time, let's say, let's put it that way. It was, it was very yeah, close. They, to, they to lost in the, the, near the end of the second. Right. But pretty much, I think it, there was maybe within a minute or two at the very beginning, there was back and forth or maybe Philly was up. But then after that, it was all Raptors until the last say minute or so of the, of this, the first half. And uh, the Sixers came back and then they just took off in the second half. And that was it. 34 points. I believe they beat them by, which was, uh, I'm pretty sure that's a it's a record in that game uh, that that type of situation. Um, but how do you feel that they played? They paid the like, price. <laughs> yeah, like that record. So you're, you know, you you're without Freddie, uh, but they still played hard. So how do you feel about how you know? Obviously, the result was shit. We do we were upset about the result, but how do you feel about their actual play uh, after going down three zero? And thought, let's say before the second half of game six. <laughs> I, thought, I thought they competed well. Like, you, they're too, at the end of the day, we can dislike Philly as much as we want, but they're two very evenly matched teams. But, and you're not going to win Except every game. Except center. <laughs> you're not going to win every game against a team like that. And after going down 3-0 and some fucking bullshit that led to that, it's extremely difficult to come back and win four in a row. 
Mm-hmm. In fact, it's never happened in the NBA. Right. So, you know, if if uh, game three goes the other way and MB doesn't make that last second shot because Doc got a technical instead for crossing over half, whatever, maybe it's a different story. We're talking about a game seven now that, uh, that could have gone either way. Mm-hmm. But it's tough to win four in a row against a team that you're very equivalent to. But because he started out in a 3 0 hole, because of some very questionable refing and a last second miracle shot from Embiid. That's the way she goes. Who? By who? Embiid. There you go. I mean, you can even include the, the game three as well in this. Like, they played great in that game, they deserved to win that game. Came down to it, they. Like you, like Pete already explained it. It was some crazy shit that probably should have been a technical, and we should have won that. And then we should have won it before we even got to overtime. And I think that's where we need to look at. We we should have ta- not allowed them to get the overtime. And they played good that whole game. I thought they played great in five and and six and well, half a six. Half a six but, yeah, half yeah. A six. I don't know what happened in that halftime, but that was just brutal. Like they, they that that seventeen zero run was just brutal. Yep, that's what did it. So yep. Hopefully they, I, I think going forward, I'm pretty happy. They made it look respectable, and I'm excited for next season. Yeah, I definitely have to second that, Jess. I think, uh, I think we saw a lot of good things out of uh, Precious. He was, he's going to be really good next year. You watch, he will be really good. Obviously, we know what, what Scotty brings, and he's going to be better than he was uh, this well, that's year. A, that's the thing. We we missed Scotty for yep. uh, two games pretty well. Yeah, two games. And yep. maybe with Scotty, we win that game three, and we don't even go close to overtime. Yeah, yep. yeah, fair enough. Uh, and a couple free throws made. That helps, too. That <laughs> yeah, helps like too. your boy. <laughs> right. yeah, just, yeah. That's a tough one there. Um yeah, I, I agree, though. I think, you know, solid across the board. Uh, you know, there was a lot of chirping about uh, why are we bringing in Thaddeus Young? He played fucking great. No no issues with that. Uh, there is talk now. Obviously, this we is did early. lose a first-round pick because of it. Yeah. Did they actually, though? Didn't they? Just yeah. like... It was yeah. protected, but because they with the way or where they finished. Didn't they just, uh, like... It was a first round, but didn't they move to like a high second round? For it was, it yeah, it was all, well, depending on the conditions. It was, it was, yeah, it, it was protected. So they had to be between like, I think like the top 15 or, or top four, something like that. And they finished outside that. So it becomes a first round. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think it was going to be a swap of like eight spots had they not made the playoffs. Yes, ex- agreed. Yes. That's which would have been no big deal. Um, but because they obviously finish higher than that, I'm, that's where the, the extra value comes from in that pick. But, um, you know, when you look across the board, like, so I've heard rumblings that somebody's going to have probably have to go. It's either going to be Boucher or Young, uh, which is tough. You know, I really like Boucher. Uh, I like saying Boucher. Boucher. <laughs> but, and, and I really like him. You know, he's this scrawny guy that you don't think could do too much, but he's a great ball player. He really is. Uh, you know, his defense is, uh, is right there. It's not, you know. It's not uh, best in the league, but it's no, he's no Draymond, but he's, uh, he's up there. You know, he's, he's very, very good defensively and he um, scores too. That's and he like, can score. He can shoot he threes. Scores. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, he's, he's so across the board. I do think that the Raps are in good, uh, good position here. Uh, obviously you're going to get uh, Freddie back and hopefully he can stay a little bit healthier than he was this year. And then it's, you know, same thing, obviously everybody, you need health across the board, obviously, but, you know, OG was, uh, he was, he was nowhere to be found in the last game. Uh, but you know, he, he was instrumental in, uh, in some of the other W's, uh, in the, in the playoff, uh, run here. Not that it was very long. They pulled he the made leaves, game but, three a game. Yeah. Like the cha- the Raptors have a chance. And, you know, obviously Gary Trent, you know, and he, he was gushing about the city, uh, afterwards they were doing, you know, postseason interviews and he was gushing about the city, how, how much he loves it and how, uh, you know, the, not the system, but the, uh, the organization is great and the facilities and blah, 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 blah. So it seems like he's quite happy to be here. Um, I mean, he already signed up a, a pretty long, like, I think it was a 
four year contract at the beginning of the year. I think it's like three, three years, years. And they got, but he's got a team option or he's got a player option. Player option. Uh, not next year, the year after. So he obviously thought right you know, then just to, to sign for a few years, he obviously figured there was something going on here and, uh, and whatnot. And, you know, we all know that Toronto's great. So um, the city that is sometimes the teams aren't, but <laughs> they've been really great recently. They have been really good a lot recently. All three of the major ones. So. Even those Leafs. Yeah. <laughs> uh. So I think, I think the direction is going phenomenal. Uh, for the future and I think next year like you said Jess it's going to be an exciting year next year for sure they will definitely push for those it's going to be the same the same group of teams you know it's going to be the Heat it's going to be the Bucks it's going to be uh, the Sixers it's going to be the Raptors it's going to be the Celtics those are going to be your top end teams next year again in the East and it's going to be a battle for sure Uh, so I was double checking while we were chatting about that because I could have sworn and I was right. Like in that trade for that young, bud. yeah, should've no shit. Why, why are you bringing something up you should have challenged for? We gave up a first round pick, lottery protected. Didn't happen. We're not in the lottery, so we give up a first round pick. But in return, we got the Pistons second round pick, which is yeah. like which is shit. Like it's great. <laughs> it's good, yeah, because <laughs> they're shit. So it's it's not a, it's not like we gave up a first round pick for Thad Young. We gave up like ten draft slots. Mm-hmm. But we don't have a first round pick. Right, but we have a high second. But that's what the guy was saying. We don't have a first round pick. No, I know, but it, what so I was what trying was to say. Challenge? What I was trying to say is that we got back in return a high second. Like it's not okay. like we traded a first for Thad Young. Mm-hmm. No, okay i get what you're saying but we, we're not in the first round as well i get what you're saying we're at the you could argue like it is it could be a, a first round because there's so much garbage and they're at the top of the second round. it's a second round you traded back in the draft you didn't just give up a first round pick it's still early though maybe they maybe they trade up we don't know maybe they got a high they got a high second round pick they got lots of capital to trade with so whether it goes through the draft or through free agency or maybe a trade what do you guys think the number one Raptors need is for next big year? Man. Big man. It's got to be a big man, right? Yeah, for sure. Center. Now that changes the, the way that they played this year though, right? Then they play a more traditional, uh, traditional game with a, with when you have a real big, you know, that this year they all played every position. It was a small lineup, although God, most guys are six, nine and they, <laughs> it has a classified as a small lineup. Right. So, and it, it worked. It really did work. Right, it yeah. worked, but you have to also think of the wear and tear. They're, they're, everyone's playing these big guys, too. And look, we had injuries. OG. Well, and we had no answer to Embiid. So, yeah. and that's right. Well, we did. We sorry, well sorry. Some during bitch, the regular bitch, season. my bad. Yeah, I was going to say, what the hell? And bitch, my bad, my but bad. But we played Philly pretty well during the regular season. Yeah. So we had something, and Philly clearly looked at the tape and figured some other way around it. So. But I still think we played them pretty well, healthy, in the postseason. It is games games one and two. You weren't healthy. You lost them both, and that was it. If those games were healthy, it, we're talking about a different series. We're probably talking. We we're had probably most talking of the guys in game, game one. Yeah, but we, Trent was not Trent. Uh, yeah, he, he, was, he, was, he, was, he was sick. I guess. And yeah. Scotty got hurt. Yeah. Scotty wasn't there. At, at the at the at the, at the, at the, at the I think it was like end of half. The, yeah, and I think it was the end of the third quarter he got hurt. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, but so yeah, but that's that. I mean, Scott is huge, right? Yeah. But that's a huge loss, uh, and you can see like Scotty plays Embiid pretty fucking well. Like he's right up on him, and you know, I mean, they all in the last uh, the, the games that they won, they played Embiid real fucking tough. And maybe we got some calls back from the refs because of all the uh, bitching and moaning and whatnot, but. So big man across the board, is that what we all think? That's, I mean, what else do they need? Everybody else is pretty solid, right? Yeah. I mean, even you could even place Precious at center and it'd be okay. But he's, if you he's need, he needs to bulk up, I think, a little bit more. Yeah. Like he's pretty big, he's a pretty big guy, but he needs to even bulk up more, I think. But he, he's also still needs to be more aggressive too. Like we saw it in game three when he, he got, 
Harden to foul out. He was playing. He went right up against him and everything like that. And that's what we wanted. Fucking yeah, ner- nerves got to him against those free throws, but well, and yeah, and keep in mind he's still twenty two years old. Like he could very well develop into the big man that you want. Let's hope. But if there is a prototypical big man out there that you can get, I would do it. But what happens if Nurse if if Nurse goes to LA? Nurse isn't going anywhere. If he does, you bring in someone else and you hope they do almost as well as Nurse. I think at this point you promote promote within. Yeah, that's what I was. I don't. I wouldn't if if you if you somehow and the thing too is like he's under contract, I believe. So you you're gonna get something in return for him, right? So. Hopefully it's a first round, <laughs> but who I don't know what the trading for a coach would be. The Lakers season. don't have any first round picks for like four years or something stupid. We'll like. take LeBron. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Who? No, no. The who? They could keep LeBitch, man. LeBitch. There we go. Well, you wouldn't. You tell me you wouldn't take LeBron on this team right now. You know, I like Come obviously on. he's a fucking Come great on. player, but I don't want to see the whole team get blown up, and even just from a. From a playing standpoint, because you bring in LeBron, the whole, everything would change. Everything agree, would change. I agree with you, on this. Is that that because like he's pretty much the coach then at that point. Yeah, because you're going to lose Nurse, which has who, he, like I said, we we're going to promote from within. He's not going to be able to tell LeBron what to do at that point. Uh, but uh, no, I think you guys are wrong. Like you, you bring in LeBron, he slides. You play spicy at power forward. You play precious at center. So you so you're saying let, let's let's trade let, let's trade nurse for the bitch. I would take that trade. I mean, uh, okay, I would probably <laughs> take that trade too, but it would never fucking happen. Yeah. It would never happen. Never, never, never. So. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for uh, for basketball. I tried to keep it short and sweet this week. I don't know, did I do good or did I ramble on? You did ramble better, in. better than usual. Better than usual. All right, all right. Ramble so. In. Uh, one sport that we never talked about tonight, actually, uh, to, uh, we usually do is a uh, baseball. We got a little baseball coming up do you in, in our you, penalty, penalty box. Do you have my baseball? I do have your baseball. I do. I got baseball. Kevin's got a baseball. I got baseball. Hey, hey Z, you got my baseball? Hey, Z. I, I was trying to sign my baseball. Sign my baseball. Trying, trying the, one, the one you didn't catch? No. <laughs> yeah, the one I grabbed on the ground because the other guy was like just turtled. Yeah, but I didn't go like this when I caught a ball. Well, you got it off the ground. It's like got a <laughs> rifle yeah. from Tay Oscar, man. Yeah, that's right. Right. Yeah, no, he 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 tossed that ball to Pedro. That was probably like a like, 70, 80 yard toss. That was a fucking yeah. I know he whipped it at you. I, I heard the ball go <laughs> by my face. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, yeah. Oh fuck. All right, guys. We got the Detroit Tigers in the penalty box. Who wants to take this one? I'll take it. So, like you said, we got uh, the Detroit Tigers in our box. And this is because of a crazy walk-off for the Twins. Bunch of defensive miscues happened here. <laughs> Again, changing air. Oh, yeah. They lose this game. So what happened was there was first and second and one out and Miguel Sano hit a line drive out to right field. Robbie Gro- Roseman went for the ball, went off his hand, but the runners like had to stay put because they thought it was going to get caught because they were going to try and take up. And Grossman got it into the field of play real quick. And then I don't know if you saw this, but Jonathan Scope from <laughs> Uh, not far from second base, like hopped it a couple times to the catcher near the plate, not even close to the plate. It was a pretty bad throw, but the runners kept running because they thought because it was such a bad throw from scope. But the third, the guy on third base did decided not to leave his base, which was a smart idea. And the catcher, Eric Haas, decided to throw it to third because everyone was running there. <laughs> so you're saying there was a runner on third base just hanging out. Yeah. 
There's a runner left second base, headed to third base. He was like right around third. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's like halfway <laughs> or more. And, the, and there's a runner from first base almost to second base. He's yep. pretty much standing there, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, carry on. <laughs> so Eric Haas decided. So, sounds like the offense is in some deep shit here. Yeah, like you wouldn't think a walk-off would be happening at this point. <laughs> but what happens is he just sailed this ball to third base. Airmailed it. Just airmailed it, like you said, Pete. And that allowed. Oh, by the way, no one was playing in left field at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, no one was there. So were they were lost, they shifting because of Sano? Like, why was there no, nobody in left? No, as uh, I believe Sano went opposite because he's he's a, he's a righty. Is he a righty? Then he did go wobble. Yeah. So he went he went opposite. So I don't know where the left fielder was. He wasn't. Days, he wasn't in left field. He just, assumed every, He assumed everything was under control. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like this. This ball went way over their head. Like you could might as well just put Eric Haas here in the penalty box. But <laughs> it was. Still, <laughs> it was still really bad. <laughs> and it, it allowed a few guys to score to be a walk off because no one could get to the ball quick enough before each of them. Uh, got home. So the guy at, at third or was on his way to third, pretty much there. Saw him airmail and was like, "Okay, well, right there, might as well just keep going." <laughs> <laughs> and so it was quite an embarrassing walk off, and it was. It is the reason why the Detroit Tigers are there, and pretty much just Eric Haas for that throw, just got awful. Yeah, terrible time to airmail that fucking toss. I mean, it kind of makes sense that both of these teams are like, you know, this they're not great teams. Let's put it that way, right? They got some good players on each team, but, you know, nothing uh, nothing that's going to uh, contend with the, the top end of each uh, each of the divisions here. But, yeah, this is fucking nuts, man. I'm like, I'm watching at first. I'm like, holy fuck, Sanoa's going to second, but nobody else yeah. is moving. What the fuck are <laughs> they What are you doing? doing? And then he starts to peel back, but then that's when they realize that this is going to be, you know, it was a two hopper to a three, four, five hopper to home. So they start going and, oh, it was, it, it was <laughs> fucked, man. It was, uh, I'm watching. I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? And then I'm like, holy fuck. He threw it out to the fucking fans in left field. <laughs> and around they come. And yeah, what a what a crazy finish. Um, I mean, you could say that there's two errors on that play. Like Robbie Grossman like missed it. Like it was a tough catch. Don't get me wrong. It was over. Uh, I wouldn't call that an error. Yeah. Well, it, it I, I don't know if it was actually scored that, but you could be curious to, to look at that. But like it, it was it was catchable. It was yeah, difficult. It was, it was, it was catchable, catchable. Yeah. and he missed it. But he got it in there real quick, and that's what fu- fucking shook everyone. I think too. <laughs> he did too good after he fucked up. Yeah, like so now was like, oh, got I got, I got too big, no problem. It's too bad. Uh, I don't know who it was. Was it Drew or Shell or Trevor Launch? Anyways, one of those two just Stuck decided to third. stop at third. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Gio plays third, right? So he's like, oh, this is my spot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. Yeah, crazy, crazy finish. Detroit Tigers. I mean, last week you were in the MVP slot. Was it last week? <laughs> two two weeks ago, wasn't it? Oh, no, we were going to put we were gonna put Cabrera in, but we decided just to chat about him and his uh, 3,000 hits. Or was he in the – was he in MVP? No. No, because it was, it was Roman Yossi. That's right. Yeah, 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 the Norris winner. <laughs> That's right. That's right. I don't, th- I don't think so, boys. Gail McCarr. Probably should have been Cabrera in the MVP last week. Just saying. Probably three, three thousand oh, yeah. hits. Is, uh... But Jeff, she was already <laughs> talking about it. So what do you want? <laughs> well, it definitely wasn't Miguel Sano in the MVP, and definitely wasn't this Haas, Eric Haas, in the MVP. No, no. He hustled a bit too much with that throw and uh, airmailed it big time. See what I did there? That was pretty good. He done fucked up for sure. He done fucked up. All right, boys. We were all in on one challenge this week. Pete, give us a recap. 
Uh, two well, challenges. There's two. There's two. There's two. Yes, there's two. Josh. Josh said the correct statement. We were all <laughs> there, in. Yeah. We were all in yeah. on at least one challenge. Yeah. I got. I got you, Josh. I follow. Uh, yeah. Oh. Okay. Uh, I can speak plain English. It's okay. Yeah. Thanks, Pete. <laughs> Shit. I spoke dumb. <laughs> Fuck off. Uh, no, I forget what the first challenge was. What was it? Brady draft year. I done Brady fucked up on that one. Brady draft year again. Yeah. Brady two thousand. Mister two thousand. And, and Daryl Sittler, Mr. Over 100. Uh, uh, so that means that this episode, Peter dropped a point. Kevin picked up a point. Yeah. Jesse picked up a point. Boo. And Josh dropped a point. Extend that lead. Look at this. This is perfect. Second and third just dropped a point. Yeah. You know, second and third, the only real race here right now. Just, uh, <laughs> Stayed consistent, so that's good. <laughs> uh, so I dropped from minus two to minus three. Kev gained ground from minus eight to minus two seven. weeks in a row. Kev, you're going up. Holy you're on, fuck, you're on fire. Jesse jumped up from plus three to plus four. Boo. And Josh dropped from minus one to minus two. Also a boo. <laughs> Peter, Kev is within five of you. Uh oh. Uh huh. I'm, you can see me shaking in my booties. <laughs> hey, in, your one, in your one at least, onesie? <laughs> at least I know that there's more than just one player that has 100 points in the Yes, list. and you know what? If I was your geriatric nature and I was around those days, I would have known that as well, and I would be tied with Josh right now for a second. But who's, that? Who, who's that right there? Who's that? that? I assume that's Daryl Sittler. It's that is Daryl Sittler. That is Sittler. <sighs> who's that? Who's that right there? That's yeah, buddy. The, that's Dougie G. It looks it's, like because that, that was the other one. The that's the other one. Guys he that have a hundred points. Uh, points. points. You'd think as a Leaf fan, I would have known that, but <laughs> <laughs> last time it happened, I was three years old, maybe oh. four. Fuck me. That anyway, was old. that was pretty old. I didn't know, and I fucked up. I done fucked up. <laughs> these things happen that's why we have challenges to keep us on our fucking on the straight and narrow so that's it jesse's still in the lead for now but it's okay he hasn't even got his dinner yet from last season he's <laughs> not fine. gonna either <laughs> no <laughs> are we getting it no we're not let's carry on to how our drinks were Maybe if Jesse wasn't such a bitch, he wouldn't oh. have uh, picked up points this week. Oh. <laughs> I'm a genius because I didn't get too wasted. <laughs> <laughs> so Jesse, remind us your bitch beer. Yes, I had the bitch beer this week. Uh, Paradise Lost from Blood, Blood Brothers Brewery in Toronto. This definitely got better over time. My first reaction to this <laughs> sour ale was rough you looked like it was your first beer and you were like a fucking 12 year old it bitter was, beer face big time it was it was a little <laughs> too sour but it got better over time i got used to it and downed them a while back so i'm i'm pretty happy with the purchase either way now peter how was yours well my uh Furminator double IPA from the Furnace Room Brewery in Georgetown. It's good. I thought it uh, would be in contention for the championship this week, but I was wrong. It's a uh, solid second place, first loser. Still better than uh, you two folks. But At the bottom good. of the screen? On the bottom <laughs> of the screen, but not good enough to be uh, the victor here. So why don't we jump to the victor? Yosh, how is your 8.51% beer? <laughs> My championship 8.51 was pretty good. I would have been it, man. If we if if I had an 8.5, I would be I, I oh. might have logged I might have logged off. I, like, have, no, I probably not, should have I, I didn't really I'm not notice contributing. It. I didn't notice it until after I cracked it, but I probably should have hung on to this one. Just until I saw you guys have a, an 8.5. So oh, I yeah. guess like, I got you like <laughs> You see, no one's going to be taking pictures before the show. Now. Yeah, not anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Outer Limits, double IPA from Riverhead Brewing out of Kingston. Uh, pretty good, as we had mentioned, 8.51%. Solid uh, IPA. 
enjoyed it. Just finishing it up now. Um, good stuff. This is a limited release, so I'm not sure if we'll ever see this one again or not, but uh, they should probably brew it again because it was tasty. Very tasty. Now, oh, you know what? Uh, let, me, let me just read a little something here. It says a double IPA from another world. Outer limits, right? Super juicy and hazy, loaded with hops, but unbelievably smooth at 8.5 one percent and 51 ibus and then in brackets it says get the area 51 reference uh that's uh, why they did uh, that's why they did 8.51 there you go there you go <laughs> so that's championship beer today let's go back to the uh not so champion kev what's your drink <laughs> oh kev, oh kev. hey hey yeah right on the uh, repeat yeah, so it's a repeat. Yep. And then it's not like we've all had non-repeats on this fucking show. Nobody's had a repeat but you, bud. What are you talking about? <laughs> Joking. <laughs> it's already after the challenge period. <laughs> <laughs> the challenge period has closed. <laughs> <laughs> now I can say stupid more, more stupid shit. <laughs> so my Voodoo Ranger IPA. Strong beer, as it says. 7%. Obviously didn't take the cake. Because of your 8.51, which I, I honestly caught right after the 5.1 when he told he's going into space. Yeah. And I kind of figured that out. But yeah, no, it's good. Tasty. I definitely will uh, probably bring this to uh, Civic. No. Because, you know. You drink it again on the you show. Will, you will not. The only thing you're bringing to Civic is PBR. PBR! <laughs> maybe Cause, some Bush. Because it's my go-to afterwards. Because that's <laughs> what I've <laughs> already Or maybe to. some Heineken's. Because he doesn't yeah. get hung over oh, with Heineken. You don't get so, a hangover. Or, or the Heinies. <laughs> or the Heinies. This man drinks three beers. Or the Heinies. And that's it. You know the Heinies. Yeah. You know what? It's funny, though. Because I pretty much drink three beers. Yeah. It's, I rotate uh, the three, same three. I'm yeah. kind of onto this one. Because I stole some of yours. It was pretty good. Beer phenomenal beer man and you drink beer. and you drink land shark yep i don't know what your third is this is the other backup oh uh, it's core's original Coors gotta be core's original. original yeah yeah pop banqui if you Banque. will <laughs> banqui it's not called banqui it's I know, original. Not anymore. if you're in the americas it's banqui america america can america. you pick up a like a two for a banqui at duty free if you're coming back to the state we all love the duty free I mean, shop we love I wouldn't I wouldn't duty go to duty free, free to get it. We I love buy it at a fucking the grocery store. Why not? Go to the go grocery to store, free. man. No. Probably no. cheaper at a grocery store. We love no. the shop duty free duty dirty. free shop. We love the shop. At the anyway, shop. we're we're off track. We are we are. We're talking about backup beers. <laughs> oh, okay, I was just cracking a backup beer. That was my like fourth and backup beer. I've had two, my surprise, PBR surprise. And my Heine. First was a PBR, second's a Heine. <laughs> I'm sure there's a bush on deck somewhere. Oh, fuck. There is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, don't talk about his wife like that. <laughs> <beer anymore. laughs> I oh. Oh, shit. All right, guys. Are you guys about done for today or what? I think you wanna, so. You want to keep blobbing on a little bit? There's no. one more thing that I have to get off my chest. Oh, come oh. on. Playoffs start tomorrow, baby. By the time we do our next show, it'll be game four. Let's go. Oh. Let's go. Oh. <laughs> it could be really depressing. Yeah, for no, sure. No, I'm going to be fired up no matter what. I'm going to be off the show tomorrow. My next week, no, I'm just kidding. What? No, I'm kidding, man. I was going to uh, delete them. Fuck, this show doesn't run if you're not on here, bud. Whatever. We need you. We need Whatever. you. Whatever. We should potentially reschedule it because it's a... Uh... Game, but yeah, we'll get to that at some other point. Just watch it in the background. I know you can do it. You can do it. I'll do like, it. I could, but I like I would be just terrible on the show. I'd be like, Challenge. what else is new? <laughs> yeah, what else? <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> right in the heart, boys. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Fucking Jesse and I are ripping you oh. today. Oh. <laughs> Gloves are off here. Oh. Today. Oh, <laughs> Oh, uh, shit. All right. I'm going to have a little drink here. And now it's time to sign off. So, for Peter, for Kevin, for Jesse, everyone here at Points of Penalties, like, thank you for listening. Please subscribe on YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts, right down here. Kev, it's the other corner. It's the other corner, Kev. You got it. <laughs> 
Give us a like and follow on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Points Penalties. And until next week, stay out of the penalty box.